vibe session with your host Shashi. I'm super super excited to be here today. Guys, it's been a tough and bumpy road, but we will get there. Let's just remember to stay at home, stay safe, and let's sanitize our hands, guys. Let's keep a social distance, guys. Let's do all that stuff, okay? So for today's show, we've got two beautiful ladies in the house, my two cool best friends. We're gonna introduce themselves right about now. So guys, can you just introduce yourself to everyone at home so that they get to know you? Tindianani, chi 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 chi, you know. Let's start with you. Hi guys, my name is Rimbo Chikanga. Um, by my stage name is Rimzi. I am a poet and a spoken word artist and a creative. And it's really nice to be here today. Wow, that's very really good. And you Hello welcome. guys, my name is Gamshali Sashumba. I'm a spoken word artist and a poet. I'm 23 years old and it's really nice to be here. Wow, thank you guys for coming here today. So I'm just gonna ask you a few like brief questions. Like what inspired you guys to you know to be into poetry? Like what was the inspiration? You can answer that now. Yeah, okay. Oh well, for me I started off writing music. Okay. I started writing songs and then I realized that I could get a broader audience if I started writing poetry. Wow. So that's what inspired me to write poetry instead. Okay, so you're a songwriter and a poet. Something like that. Wow. And you, Rumi? I've always been a writer, okay. so I just felt like it's a way to express myself instead of trying to speak to someone. People might not actually interact with other people the way you might think they actually do, so poetry is a way to get to someone's ears and to someone's heart. Wow, that's very good. So, let's get into it, guys. So, the person who's going to give us our first presentation of the day today is none other than Ruvimbo. So, Ruvimbo, this is your time. Okay, so this piece mm. is called The Solemn Hymn of a Good Street Child. Wow. So, get this. Some guy came up with a funny saying stating, there's no such thing as a street child. The streets have never given birth. They laughed and comically spoke, literally bursting into tears of laughter like my life is a sick joke. As they laughed, I trembled and I began to choke. I choked on my unspoken truth. I felt my fragile heart shatter. And although they couldn't see it, I felt deeply offended by their banter. They just simply uncovered the truth of the matter, which was, in the eyes of this world, these emotions and this body of matter don't seem to matter. I found a mother in these streets, just not the one that will embrace me and bind the aching soles of my feet, just the ones that either help me or ignore me. They help as they please. I'm begging for alms and alms, please put something in these palms, anything at all. Baked of fresh goods, I sure hope I find you in a good mood. All I'm begging for is food. I don't need any toys. Stop helping out those boys. They're not grateful. They won't even thank you. They'll just take that money and go buy some more blue. It seems as if I'm the only one out here trying to survive. With no money in my pocket and no honey in my hive. Nothing tangible, nothing I can brand and call my own. Just this young and vulnerable soul lived out in these streets to die. You're stacking up clothes, I see. Multiple closets and drawers, it seems I'm just waiting for the turning of tables. You're busy hoarding designer labels while I'm here being labeled as homeless. Distressed, I'm a whole mess. Malnutrition from the fact that I have to eat less. I'm forced into starvation while you decide to go on a diet. Remember that diet coke you decided to spill on the sidewalk as I watched. In agony excruciating scrutiny as I day dreamt of a fine wine and dine that I'll one day call mine with a sweet cup of tea. Well, I'm here to tip it over for you. I'm here to spill the tea. Mm -hmm. Blessings only come to those who give freely. Well, that's not you, obviously. I wear bits, pieces, and scraps. I've tried to retrace my way back home, but I don't even have the maps. Mm -hmm. Sticks and stones indeed break my bones. I'm Stephen's witness. They say that, honey, you're special and your heart is made of gold. Well, these bruises and scars are here to decline all the lies I've been told. I'm sorry when all this gold ever feels as rusted and old. Maybe there's just not enough joy on this earth for me. Unless mama comes back and says she's sorry, well, until then, I'll just remain here all sad and lonely. But don't get me wrong, I don't want to go back. He came with this strategic destruction of peace attack. He took the privilege of tearing my family apart. 
Now all that's left of this family tree is this branch that I fought for when I fell and broke my heart. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> wow, that was beautiful. That was so Thank beautiful. You. Ish, I'm touched. You know, ish, ish, you touched me. Ish, <laughs> you touched me every I just want to know, like, what inspired, what inspired that point? Because you know, it's ish. I'm actually speechless. I don't even know where to begin or what to say. What inspired it? So what happened was um, I was at home. Mm -hmm. So we have this road where the street kids are just lingering around. So I decided let me talk to this poor girl. She seems like mm -hmm. I always pass by and give her something. So let me ask what exactly is the problem. Mm -hmm. So when she was speaking, I just realized that not all of them are going through what you think they are going through. You don't know what's going through their mind. So I was like, okay, let me try send the message to the people around. Mm -hmm. And and you, you found your way of, of spreading that message yeah. and using poetry. Yes. I hope people at home, you, you, li you listen to this poem and you heard what she was talking about. I mean, she was talking about street children, guys. Let's not just assume that those people, they need money or toys or food. Let's talk to them. Let's find out like what's the problem. Together, we can actually eradicate this problem, right? So, right about now, I'm going to give this chance to Gamu to also share her piece. Thank you very much. Uh, my piece is called Am I Just a Snack to You? Wow. So I hope you like it. <clears throat> Am I just a snack to you? Or are you just a fake version of a man? Because in my understanding, he made you in his very own image, devoid of any form of alteration. So why do you counterfeit yourself? Why do you fit wonder in fields of lust and thorns only to get thristled? Gushing out toxic blood that contaminates my body. Am I just a snack to you? Oh, don't you understand that sometimes all I need from you is a distant and fruitful conversation, but you treat me like a dinner reservation. So I have decided to desert you before you even start because I refuse to be treated like a three-course meal. With a fork in your hand ready to grill me in your lustful flames, with the green like that of the devil awaiting to cremate the condemned in haters, I refuse to feel your fire with the breeze of heaven awaits me, so am I just a snack to you? Oh, don't you understand that I need you to caress me with your words, make love to my mind as I to you, but you have no idea what it takes to be a man, do you? Don't you know that my body is a temple as much as yours, but you treat it like an after party, champagne showers and a two minute hike, am I just a snack to you? Like a sacrificial lamp, I take all the blame for letting you disrespect me in the first place. But the veil of misunderstanding has been lifted from my eyes. That which was old has been made anew in me. So please don't drag me back to the hell of my past. Because you are afraid to step out of the heat that you have conformed to. Am I just a snack to you? I know that I was detached from your ribs, but dare treat me like a box of steers, salivating and drooling. How can you abuse part of your own body? I ask you for a favor and you ask me for my flavor. You pathetic excuse of a man. This is a story of when your venom meets my antidote. It does not end too well for you. Because I know who I am. I know my worth. The prince of peace, a perfect gentleman, dwells within me. So if you cannot match up, match out, soldier boy. A snack, you say, but one that you can never afford because I was bought at a price that you can never fathom. So if you really want me, respect me. How you ask by being the man that he created you to be, not this duplicate copy that you have made of yourself. So I will ask you once more, am I just a snack to you? Or are you just a fake version of a man? Thank you. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Guys, mm -hmm. that is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Come, I want to know, what's the story behind this? What's the story behind the poem? Uh, well, uh, it all happened when I was at work. And then um, my boss made a nasty comment to this other girl who was an attachment bay. And then that just inspired me to write something about it. Like, she is more than that. She's intelligent, but all he says is a snack. Wow. So you're actually addressing issues you do with sexual harassment at the workplace. Exactly. Well, and that's something that people don't even talk about. Guys, it's a very serious issue. Sexual harassment, I and guys, this is also the time for me to remind you guys, please, let's wear our face masks. Let's sanitize our hands. Let's stay at home. We are here with that we are here to bring entertainment to you guys. So guys, let's just remember to stay safe and stay at home. 
So we're gonna move on to our second uh, uh, pieces, right? And we're gonna start with yeah. Yes. We're gonna start with you. Okay. Well, the second poem is called "The Lazarus Effect." Again, it's about women. Wow. Okay. You're all for the women. I see you. Yes. <laughs> Taken for granted because she does not possess masculinity, they limited her abilities to maternity. They crowned her a child bearer and disregarded the power of her mind, but little did they know that she is one of a kind. She is a force to be reckoned with. Counted amongst the supernatural, she is a double-edged sword. Her femininity grants her the power to seduce nations and deliver creations, while the masculinity of her mind is stronger than any man alive, but they choose to shame her and to tame her. Abused and deprived of opportunities because she possesses breasts, but they forget that they once survived on them. They call her body vulgar. But when she moves her hips back and forth like a boomerang, they all fall at her feet. The question is, who's got the power now? When they designated her worth to the kitchen, she became a master chef. And when they said that her worth was to deliver babies, she became a gynecologist. She does not require a PhD in mathematics to transform negatives to positives. But because they underestimate her, she will destroy their motives. A new order of things she demands, otherwise she will reprimand to stand as an equal rather than a minion. Judge her based on her mind and not her physical makeup, she urges you to wake up from your deep sleep of ignorance and recognize her importance. She is power, she is female, no different from any other male. You trump her down and she will arise because she possesses that Lazarus effect. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> I believe you've got your fix right. I mean, I see you all about women empowerment, and that's a good thing, you know. Thank you very much. Actually, I want to ask, what do you think about the point that she just presented for us today? That was amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. It was very strong. Yeah, it's very, very strong and it's great. Like, mm -hmm. what's the story behind? Because I know with every point, there's always a story and inspiration behind whatever they write. I believe so. That's what I really believe. Well, well, with my poem, it's like feminism is basically the same uh, story. Women are underrated, women are underestimated, they are abused, mm -hmm. they are, yeah, you know, marginalized. So yeah. basically, that's the inspiration behind the two points mm -hmm. uh, marginalization of women. Yeah, that's true. And you know, with this whole issue of Black Lives Matter happening and the whole COVID 19 happening, you can imagine, like, what's happening. Imagine the women who are marginalized, what they're going through with this whole lockdown, guys. Exactly. So, you know, it's, it's really sad. and. The only way that some of us can then spread these messages is through the use of our art. And so we are good at poems and poetry and spoken words. So let's just continue working to Tishanda and then we'll spread our message our positive messages through the use of our art. Okay. Of our art. So we're gonna move on to your second piece of today. Alright, my second piece. This one is more or less in the temple to be specific yes <laughs> okay so um here it goes the temple we have in onzi tauri sangwa nasikana runyara road wangu in novo kubwa kutsoro poza kweva nyari kani ungati kushaya izwi nyanduri ave chimumu asiangandi vunza ndiyani vaima uguro yangu ne mashoku wano kuzira ndimi zimbewewe Imba yemi tsara anu ya mbira ndo ya ndakuwa kila imu ndzewe. Masu ya mbunda kumashandisa semi ndzio ya kukunda kwe magwara. Banda kazi aile akasunga muromo azo pukunyuka. Oneka nenyazi wotanga wendu wa muno siti roka guamba. Chiri mbisa wimbo wako wamira pane wa muno tivaka shinga. Wamanda uriza ndzio zenduramo. Imbwa nekiti zwa jikizana imo mundiro. Kamba neturo zwa mangizana ne hava kawu imwe. Antari ya simba ino simbi swa ni mafungiro ya mfungwa. Na raonda ya kondo ya kapata matimba ya wendo. Simba ya uomerili mumvura. Chida izai uwandu uwone uzinoshura. Awa matarenda aile akasiwa nendimi za matitateguru. Aka torwa, dokureshewa, aka fushi wa mkua. Wow. Ah. I need to ask. You know, I know you personally. I never thought you'd do your poetry in 
Ishwala. To be honest, I'm sorry, but it's true. I never knew you did poetry, Ishwala. What's yeah. the story with this one? Um, I've always had an issue with the way African creatives do not know how to own up to their mother tongues and their cultures. Mm -hmm. So I just thought, I'm brilliant and Shana, why not actually also write Shana poetry? So most of my art can also be translated into Shana and also taking it into mind that I can also learn other traditional mm, yeah. African languages too. Yeah, that's, that's very true. So what was the story behind this, this poem? What was it all about? Can you just um, explain briefly? Tiangeli Basically, mm. With this netembo, if you read it instead of hearing it, mm -hmm. every the, the beginning of each and every sentence has a word and a letter, mm -hmm. and the letters at the beginning spell out my name. Wow. So it's R U V I N B O C H I K N D A. But it's just speaking of how the girl child should also speak up, mm -hmm. and in terms of how things used to be back then when girls were not allowed to go to school. Mm -hmm. Girls did not have a say in what was happening around them. They were just there. So, yeah. so now we are humans too and we should learn how to Speak man up. up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, how to woman up. How to woman up. How to woman up. Yeah, that's very really true. And what I know about the girl child, there are a lot of issues which are happening, issues to do with child marriages, you know, prostitution. Guys, which so girls, girls, you know, a lot of things that are affecting girls, especially imagine in this whole lockdown in COVID 19. Like, guys, imagine, where are the girls getting the sanitation for? And they're expensive. These are issues we should be talking about. And I'm so glad that she, we have this platform to talk about these issues. We need to, uh, we need these issues to be addressed. People at home, who didn't do anything, we need these issues to be addressed at home. So, so I'm going to give Gao once again to give us her third piece for today. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the last piece that I'm going to do is called uh, I Crave That Old School Type of Love. It's quite playful. So, I hope you like it. Um, I Crave That Old School Type of Love. You, my high waist palazzo, and I, your vintage leather belt, together would make a fashion statement. Our hearts trending with excitement would definitely make the magazine cover eye crave that old school type of love. Where you caught me through letters inscribed with a passionate handwriting, and as I scanned through your honeycombed profession of love, the butterflies in my stomach dance and ululate. As I feel my cheeks bulk up into a blush, mesmerized at how my lips are capable of stretching that much. I crave that old school type of love. Where you sneak into my grandmother's compound like the devil sneaks into the minds of men, tiptoeing, afraid my dog would mistake you for the gift that you already are. After all, you did steal my heart. It's almost past midnight. The witches are flying around in their UFOs as we gaze at the stars and the flames in our hearts are blazing the fire that we seek warmth to. I crave that old school type of love. Where you hold my hand, and I feel my heart almost jumping out of my chest, yearning to cuddle skin to skin with yours as we relate the happenings of our days to each other, infused with a pint of drugs we love so hard stone has nothing on it. I crave that old school type of love, where the twinkle in our eyes make us believe that stars inhabit our irises, as we gaze at each other shyly, our lips pouting into beaks, and as they brush slowly upon each other, my alarm violently wakes me up from my sleep, but oh man, how I crave that old school type of love. Thank you. Now, we just go. Oh, it's good. Oh my god. So, no, ah, come, tell me. What? Is this? No, I mean, this is what I need to do. Cha, tell us. What's the story? Oh, well, I just noticed that this day is me. The people are just dating through phones, social media, yeah. chat, Snapchat, mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, and it's not like it doesn't have that substance like right. from way back. So then I was reading this book and I saw a picture of a girl and a guy sitting on a fire, mm -hmm. and then that inspired me to write something about old school type of love. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. Yes. <laughs> what did you do oh, about wow. that? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, yeah, I'm inspired now. I'm a little inspired because, but no, it's true what you're saying though. Because nowadays we really live in a world which is really fast. We've got all this thing, social media, and all that, and a lot of things that were happening. As this is not a dad too. So good day. It was you know, it was like really nice. When you were not tamba, when you were not tamba, not January, you know, this paper. No, so you want to see now May, April, June, no, so we plan next year. You know, it was something. But now I am not going to WhatsApp, DM, and all that. Ah, so I go down, I go down. So anyways, ah, so um, I'm gonna move on to you, Rubzi, to give us your last piece of today. Okay, so this piece is called Love at First Bullet. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Love at First Bullet. 21st century Cupid uses a handgun. Clearly, love is blind. These children are so consumed with death because they've never witnessed a bullet wound. They want to see it in hindsight. Little Johnny lay there on the floor, secretly debating, why do we fight to live and then we live to die? He pulled out a gun, flipped a coin with his ghost to decide whose turn it was to take over. But just like a firstborn son during the Passover, he sealed his fate. It was all over. Next was a game of rock, paper, scissors to decide which six vital body parts to pull the trigger on. Russian roulette with six bullets in the chamber, ten extra in the holster, and a definite one, one probability of death. This little boy was now lying there thinking, what on earth am I doing? But still, my G took a bullet to the head, turned to look at the mirror to face his fate, with the bloody right side of his face. The penalty to life is a gory downfall and a punishment of love is a pitless end. He dove into a pool of his own hemoglobin. Oxygen ceased to increase and exist in his cells. He took his last huff and puff, slid into the eternal coma, blinked his last. Now that we see that he's dead, Although it was being called a suicidal act, his soul was at rest by completing the death and life pact. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, tell me, what's the story behind this one? Mm. This one was a, it really, it, it touched me. It was just speechless. I just want to know what me. Tell me, what's the story behind this poem? With this one, I just looked at our generation. Mm -hmm and things that happen on social media. And at some point I've noticed that people have made depression a trend. And talking about death, I'm so suicidal, slit my wrist, what, 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 and um, that's not really a good way to do it. But then people think that it's a way of ending all your troubles, although it's not. But if that's what they think, just let them do it, but just also speak to them and tell them you know that's not how you do it and death is not really a fashion trend it's not really like the last exactly. or exactly i think on, on that topic Ruzi, it would be the issue of near your mental health awareness mm. because for us especially as our generation right we've been exposed to a lot of stuff like Tunja Kawanda. so when we mention the issue of mental health when we talk to our parents i'm like no, you're depressed I might not depressed, but they don't know it's actually an issue. It can lead someone to adult okay. to suicide, you know. And if you look at the numbers right now, the numbers of the young people who are committing suicide and doing all that, it's because they're depressed. Most of them are suffering from anxiety and a lot of stuff like that. So I feel like we should use our art as a way of empowering each other, educating each other, you know, who wants to the the issues to do with depression and all that and all that. So guys, I want to thank you so much. Say me up there. But I want to thank you so much for coming today, guys. Thank you so much. I just want you to just give your last words to the people at home world. Since you're coming, you know, you're going to come back, of course. So just give them your last shout outs, then we wrap up the show. Okay. My shout outs to you guys is if you're creating, Keep creating, don't be brought down by the whole lockdown situation. Create, create, create. Make your own platform out there, you will find it. Create and someone, don't think that no one is seeing you creating. We are all watching, we know how this is going. Just find your inspiration. Keep going. Keep pushing.
um, your last break. Mm -hmm. Okay, I thank you for having me here, and I think that I'll just say, if you're a creator, right, just uh, don't give up. You have ideas, put them down on paper, invest in whatever you want to see in the future, even though it takes years or I don't know. Just invest, keep investing, because whatever you put in, you definitely come out. Thank you very much guys and you remember guys let's stay safe. Eh? So from me and the crew behind the scenes, thank you so much. See you soon.